this is the foundation for our employees. Everyone who knows me knows I want to inspire and motivate people to be safe. I want to bring back that value that we sometimes forget. So, tell me now, how do you inspire others to be safe? Of course, family is going to be the number one reason how we can inspire others to be safe. We need to get them at the heart. The reason why they are safe on location is because of family. They want to go home the way they came to work. And we need to make sure we're holding that value in their family. Employees want to be rewarded for safe behavior, like incentives for good catches on location. Employees also want to be given the opportunity to learn above and beyond their normal job duties. Employees also have a lot of respect for management who gets their hands dirty with them, doing equipment checks, being on location, just getting that respect and being side by side with them, that speaks volumes. Who doesn't like being told that they're doing a great job, keep up the good work, we appreciate you working in the snow, the rain, the sleet? Who doesn't appreciate that? They do. They appreciate that. How about location visits? They love seeing management come to location. And great, ownership and safety. When we have all of these things that we do to help inspire others, we are reducing lost time and minor injury rates by 35%. How about insurance premiums by 30%? But those statistics don't matter. What about this one? With all the different ways and methods on how to help inspire others to be safe, we are helping to improve the employee's safety behavior by as much as 86%. That is safety behavior. So let me ask you today, how will you inspire others to be safe? If I'm out in the shop and say, for instance, I'm hammering on something and I don't got steel toe blue toe, well, it's not out of the question for the guys to come over and catch me. And, you know, I, I'm held to the same, you know, standards as they are. The woman and man here with QES uh, has integrity to go hand in hand with safety. I think we can just about do, you know, anything we put our mindset forth to. Like, for instance, uh, in Ohio, we went from several incidents uh, down to pretty much zero. It's been a year and a half since we had a lost time incident or any type of recordable or anything like that. So, I mean, look at the company's TRR hour now. You know, it was consistently, consistently above, you know, 1.5 almost at one point to a two. And now our, our trend is, is down below a one. And today I think we stand at 0.86. Lead off. Yep. Equalize. Yep. All right. Well, I say everything's good. We checked over everything, got everything maintenance up. I say we wrap it up, get ready to wash it. It'll be ready for the next job. Yep. Right? It'll be good. Good for me. Hey, you've got your ring on. You might want to be careful about that. You get caught on something or keep your finger off. Be careful. Yeah, I didn't even notice that, man. Thanks. All right? You catch me, I catch you. That's what makes it work. Look out for you guys. Yep. Yep. I appreciate that, man. It's good to me. Cool? Yep. Cool and ready to go. Like I previously stated uh, earlier, you got to make sure that you're involved with your guys. If you're not involved with your guys, your guys aren't going to be involved with you. Uh, Safety is really important to both Chuck and I and everyone else here in Ohio and throughout our district and, and uh, yeah, whole company. So if you're not out here involved with the guys, 
they're not going to fully buy in. So make sure you stay in tight with them and make sure that they see you doing exactly what you expect them to do. At QES Pressure Control, we're working hard to continue with and further enhance our culture around safety, integrity, and performance. We want our brand to be synonymous with these core values. Today, across the lower 48, we operate in most major basins. We have 10 operating facilities and nearly 350 people supporting a fleet in excess of 35 snubbing units, 20 coal tubing units, 20 nitrogen units, as well as all the ancillary equipment and services to effectively support this size operation. In 2016, we finished the year very good in regards to safety performance. Um, had a successful year, but know we need to continue with looking at ways to enhance our performance and continue to drive this type of culture throughout our organization. So going into 2017, we identified four key areas that we wanted to focus on around stop work authority, proper hand placement, journey management, and more specifically pre-trip inspections, as well as a new observation program that we're putting in place. The first of these four areas is stop work authority. We continue to work hard and communicate with all our employees that they have the right, and not only the right, but the duty and the obligation to stop work at any time and not feel any retaliation for that. We feel it's imperative that our employees feel comfortable and able to enact stop work authority, whether it's associated with their own operation and job or task, or if they even believe that there's a accompanying supplier or other tasks taking place on location that's inappropriate. We encourage all our employees to enact stop work authority. The second area that we're focusing on is hand placement or proper hand placement. Last year and the year before, that was an area of concern for our company as a significant number of our incidents were around hand, hand injuries or potential hand injuries. Going into 2017, we're continuing to put out communication packages, presentations, discuss in safety uh, sessions in our weekly safety sections, as well as toolbox discussions around proper, proper hand placement and proper impact gloves to wear for the task at hand. Third is the quality of pre-trip inspections. Driving is inherently one of the most dangerous things that we all do on a daily basis. We're putting added emphasis and accountability with our management team and supervisors and ensuring that all our drivers are completing and documenting proper pre-trip and 360 walk-arounds on all vehicles prior to departing for their destination. This is an area that we feel we can continue to improve in and especially as we're starting to see an increase in activity uh, throughout our different operating segments uh, going forward. And fourth area that we're focused on for 2017 is a new program that we implemented in January this year that we're really excited about. It's our Hazard Scout uh, platform um, and we're seeing a, a really good uptick in it. It's basically a uh, gives us the ability in, in a real-time fashion to record either safe or unsafe observations. All our employees are, are able to log into this system um, and record these. They can use either their iPhone, they can use an iPad, or they can use their computer once they get back to their office or their facility to log in the, the observations that they conducted. This then allows our HSC team to quickly and uh, efficiently analyze the data, the observations, and disseminate that information across our operations group uh, for corrective actions or sharing of best practices. So we're really excited about the uptick that we're seeing from the employee base um, with this program, as well as we're starting to add on more attributes to it uh, for real-time capture of various aspects of our business going forward. 
So overall, uh, from 2016 to 2017, we've, we've continued to have improvement in our safety performance. Our 12-month rolling uh, incident rate is 0.9. Our year to date uh, for 2017 is 0.86. Our LTIR is uh, lost time incident rate is zero. And so we're very proud of our company, of our employees, of our organization, and the level of, of uh, detail and, and diligent work that's being done at our various districts and driving this type of safety culture. You know, when we roll it back to who we are um, around safety, integrity, and performance. That, those are our key themes, those are our core values. Uh, that's who we are, and that's, that's who we'll always be.